So we're outside and there's a storm on the way. So I'm gonna talk rather quickly, but I want to answer a question that many of you have written in about. Actually, kind of threefold question. How do you make your own hand sanitizer? And how should I safely and naturally sanitize my surfaces as well as the fresh produce that I get home from the store? We're gonna answer all of that very quickly and very simply in the next few minutes. So don't go away. We are outside today and you may hear some rain on the tin roof. Don't pay it any mind because I wanna answer how to quickly make your own hand sanitizer. And for those of you who are really into simple and easy, I'm just gonna make it really, really fast for you here. And then if you wanna stay for the more elaborate version, you can, and I encourage you to. But literally, if you needed to sanitize your hands, just get yourself some isopropyl alcohol and rub it in real good and that's probably gonna do the trick. You need it to be above 70% pref uh, preferably, but between 90 and 99% is going to be a lot more effective. Now, let me say the little bit longer version of that though. That's pretty hard on your hands. That's, that's really hard. They're gonna dry out after about one use. So I'm going to show you one of my favorite hand sanitizers I've purchased in the past was from, I think it says Grove Collaborative or something like that, all natural hand sanitizer. So it only has like four ingredients. And I wanna share my version of that same recipe. I don't know their exact ratios, but I do know what the World Health Organizations and other um, important health organizations have said they have found is the most effective, and we do want the most effective. So I'm putting that together with what I've received from them. Here's how it works. You're going to want to make, for one cup, that's what we're going to make today, one cup of hand sanitizer spray. You're going to want two thirds of it to be the highest content isopropyl alcohol you can get. So 99 would be even better than this. You see I have 91% here. That's going to work just fine for this, but the higher that percentage is, the better. So if you can get 99% isopropyl alcohol, do it. I've got 91 and it's gonna work just fine. You're going to fill a one cup measurement up with one, oh, I'm sorry, with two thirds of a cup. And then we're gonna get creative with that last third. It's a pretty easy recipe so far. I hope you're following. Now, for the very, very simple, if you just still wanna stay really simple, all you need to add to this to make your own spray would be something like either distilled water or one step up from that that's a little bit more healthy for your hands would be aloe vera juice. Either one of those can fill that other third of a cup up and you've got yourself an excellent spray that's going to be a little bit more nourishing for your hands and still do the trick. I'm gonna take it up one step more though because I want it to be as healthy and nourishing as possible and still effective as a hand sanitizer. Why this was my favorite was because it had this wonderful blood orange uh, scent to it that was all natural. And so I'm going to show you what I would make to get as close to their version as possible. I'm going to put in two thirds of a cup of the isopropyl alcohol between 90 and 99%. Then I'm going to add just shy of one third cup of aloe vera juice, okay? I love this, this is the kind I drink, it's the kind I put on my face, it's the kind I use in a lot of things. I put it on my hair, but it's going to be excellent in this as going on your skin. But then I said I do just shy of that third cup because I'm going to add either a fourth of a teaspoon of vitamin E oil or glycerin. Both are excellent for your skin and vitamin E oil is going to be even a little bit more nourishing. So one fourth of a teaspoon of that. And then the last thing you need to add is just the essential oil of something that's safe but smells delicious. And because I loved the orange smell of this, I went out and bought myself some orange essential oil. Now, I don't recommend this brand. I'm not even sure what this is. It, it was very diluted smelling and I kind of ended up needing about 30 drops of it to make my full cup worth of hand sanitizer that smelled and did what it was supposed to. But I think if you got a better, um, higher potency of that essential oil, you're gonna need less drops. But to recap, I put in 30 drops of that with my fourth of a teaspoon of the vitamin E or glycerin, glycerin, 
and then my just shy of a third cup of aloe vera juice and the rest of it, two thirds cup of that isopropyl alcohol. That's literally all you need, okay? You shake it up and you put it in your little bottles that you're going to distribute it in. And I will say that it's going to keep longer if you have it in a dark amber type bottle like this. But if all you can get a hold of are a clear bottle, you can do it that way as well. You are going to want to keep it in a dark place and it will keep for a couple of months just fine, like in a dark purse or a dark cabinet. Um, but do shake it up just so it incorporates everything right before you spray it on your hands. And let me say this, when it does come time for you to spray it on your hands, remember this, we're going to spray the front and every finger and we're going to spray the back and all across the palm really, really good. So it's just dripping down your, <laughs> your arm. And then we're going to rub and rub for about 20 full seconds. And we're going to get in between our fingers and we're going to get our fingernails in there. And you want every single crack and cranny and bit of that to get all over your hands. Really rub them well for about 20 seconds. And I'm going to say this is a perfect time to just leave them wet. Don't wipe them off or anything. Just let them finish that drying process. Take about three big deep breaths because we never do that enough. So that's a good time to just rest, breathe in. It smells wonderful too. So it's going to be good for that. But then you've got your cleaned hands. All right. That was easy. Now, a couple of you have asked about what about solid surfaces? How can I clean those effectively? And the quickest way and most effective, let me just tell you, is going to be using straight Clorox. But Clorox doesn't keep well for long periods of time. And if you can get calcium hydro hydrochlorite, I always say it wrong, calcium hydrochlorite, this is one bag of what's known as pool shock. This is literally worth about, uh, about the equivalent of 100 gallons of Clorox. And so mixing just a little bit of this in water is going to be a very effective wipe. However, you would want to wear gloves with that when you're using it. And you would want to make sure you don't accidentally lean against the counter after you've wiped a counter or a toilet. You don't want to lean against that with your clothing because it could easily damage your clothing just like Clorox will do. However, it is not a, an all natural product. If you're wanting something a little bit milder and a little bit more natural, there's nothing that's going to be quite as strong. However, uh, the hydrogen peroxide is going to be an excellent bet for you to wipe surfaces down with. And it also is going to work, you can use it almost interchangeably for what you're going to wash your produce with. Let me say this. There is almost nothing more effective at getting that waxy surface off those apples from the store as straight lemon juice. So you can get it in a bottle or cut up fresh lemons, but if you can get some juice wiped on the outside of that apple, very quickly you're gonna notice that wax just comes right off. To clean your fresh produce, whether it's fruits or vegetables, a safe way is going to be to use apple cider vinegar and hydrogen peroxide. However, you can't use them together. <laughs> Is that weird or what? So whether you use white vinegar or apple cider vinegar, I have both and either one will do the job. I have it hiding back behind that. Either one will do the job just fine. But let me tell you this, you can't mix them together because they put off this chemical. I think it's called parasitic acid, but um, not only is it unstable, but it's also very hard on your lungs. It's very hard, especially if you have some sort of asthma, to breathe that in. You don't want to put them together, even though it's probably safe for your vegetables. It's not going to damage them in any way. So I'm going to tell you that the easy and simplest way to do it is just throw two bowls of water with one, with about a cup of apple cider vinegar in it in a big bowl and they'll fill it up the rest of the way with water. Put your vegetables or your fresh produce or your um, fruit down in that and let it just sit for about oh five minutes or so and then take it off, take it out of that and dump it into a bowl just very similar with about a half a cup of hydrogen peroxide and water in it and let them be 
uh, turned over in that bowl and they'll be just fine. Rinse them ultimately with clean water and you're going to have very nicely uh, bacteria-free vegetables or fruits. Interestingly, the method of these two is also used by some to uh, clean the bacteria out of meats and beef. And I'll try to have a link to that down below. You'll always want to expand the description below our video so that you can see any links or sources that might be helpful for you to get more information. And I'll try to make sure both of those um, sources that I'm quoting right now are linked down below. Now, that same type of process can be used on your countertops and have the same effectiveness. So don't put them like, like so many are, are tempted to do. It would be easy to just put half vinegar and half hydrogen peroxide in a jar and close the lid. And I'm gonna tell you, that is not safe. Many studies by many universities have said, no, that's not really the safest option because that's an unstable uh, situation. And when you open the lid, it's gonna put off a toxic chemical of that um, acid that you don't want to be breathing in. So keep yourself from doing that, but you could wipe your, your countertops down and it doesn't matter in which order you go, but wipe them down with the hydrogen peroxide so that they're wet. Leave them wet for about five minutes and then wipe them down with vinegar. Not only is that going to clean off the bacteria, but it's also going to get any kind of fungus that might be present, um, which is important if you live in the south like I do, where there's so much humidity in the air, you're always trying to make sure that no mold grows anywhere. All right, I hope I have answered at least the majority of your questions that you've had about these types of ways that we need to keep clean, especially during these days. But if we didn't, feel free to write in because we'd love to hear from you. I can promise that I do my best to answer at least the first hundred comments that come in after we've posted a new episode, but after that, I'm going to trust that we've covered the most important, most common questions, and at that point, I just want to encourage you, always expand the information that's below the video. I think it's called, it just says often, show more, but it's actually a description box below each of our episodes on YouTube. Make sure you've opened that because if there are sources that I need to cite, I try to put them in there or links where you can get your hands on some of these products as well as any other major information updates that I might need to bring you about something. Okay, it's your turn. Tell us your favorite way to sanitize around your home besides, <laughs> besides heat, which is the best. Don't try and burn your house down to get it clean, but there are natural and good ways that all of us can share with each other. So let us hear what you're using where you are. Also, share this video with somebody that you love and make sure you go out this week and find someone who needs you and make sure you're a blessing to them. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>Hey, before you go, I would love to share with you a quick word of scripture. You don't have to stick around, but this is a beautiful promise for God's children. This is out of the Holy Bible in the New Testament. It's the book of Romans and it's the eighth chapter, verses 37 and 38. It says this, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, not height or depth or anything in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. <laughs> now go spread the word.